Welcome back. Today we're going to make birdhouses using our sample snap and glue birdhouse project. You can use this opportunity to explore nesting and sheet production planning features in Vetric software, such as vCarve and Aspire. I'll start by importing the DXF drawings for each panel of the birdhouse. You can do this or use the Vetric project file which already has them imported, nested, and the reference toolpaths defined. As I import the panel drawings, I position them on the canvas. And while they are still selected, I use the group command to bind the panel's vectors together, such that nesting will preserve their geometric relationships. Otherwise, you can create groupings on the fly by multi-selecting vectors and using the group command. There are multiple methods of multi-selecting vectors, one at a time by holding the shift key and selecting them, or by click and dragging a bounding box. Direction matters here. When you create a bounding box from right to left, you are selecting by crossing, meaning that everything the bounding box touches, even partially, will be selected. Whereas when you drag the box left to right, you are selecting by window, which means only the vectors completely inside the bounding box are selected. Okay, getting back to the project, let's start with the common case. We have a number of vector part groups to nest, and to keep it simple, let's also assume we're only making enough parts for one birdhouse. Later we'll talk about how we'd approach scaling production. I'll start by selecting the vector groups. It's important that they're organized and grouped, otherwise nesting will move vectors that should have fixed relationships to each other, such as interior features, holes, and etc. With the vector group selected, I'll click on the nest command and verify that my tool diameter, clearance, and number of copies is what I expect, and select preview. And once satisfied, hit OK. Vectric software can easily be programmed to nest within arbitrary boundary vectors as well. This is especially useful for avoiding damaged areas or other unique circumstances. For this example, let's assume there's a length of unusable stock in the upper right hand corner. I'll draw a simple boundary to exclude that area, select my vector part groups as normal, and this is the important part, select the boundary vector last before starting the nest command. Within the command, I'll ensure I check the last vector is nest boundary option and select preview. We can now see that the program has nested within the containment boundary we defined. Alternatively, I can also manually and arbitrarily nest, which in some circumstances may be just as quick for avoiding knots, imperfections, or dealing with odd sized remnants in one-off boards. It really is that easy. Since we need to create some small features, we're using the 1 8 inch flat end mill, running at 225 IPM at 12,000 spindle RPM. The program should take less than 10 minutes. With the program complete, I'll break the tabs to free the parts. And sand away the tab remnants. Before painting and finishing, I'll dry assemble the birdhouse and ensure everything fits well. I'll use shellac on the front, back, and floor panels and green paint for the roof. Now it's time to assemble the birdhouse. I'll glue and fit the 5 16th wood dowel that will serve as the perch and glue and assemble the panels starting with the roof section. As I go I'm applying firm pressure to ensure the locating tabs are fully seated in the mating pockets. If for some reason the fitment doesn't feel tight you could use blue painter's tape to secure the joints until the glue dries. And that's all there is to it. Our birdhouse is ready for an occupant. 
If you came to watch us build the birdhouse, congratulations, you've made it. For everyone else, CNC enthusiasts and pros, let's press on and talk about how we'd approach scaling production on a larger format machine such as the Pro 4896, a 4x8 professional grade machine from CNC router parts. Before I go any further, I like to organize my vectors in layers that typically mirror one for one my toolpath operations. This way, after group and ungrouping back to the original layers, I'll always be able to control visibility and ease selection when updating or changing my toolpath profile information. Now I'll begin by expanding my job size to represent a 4 foot by 8 foot sheet. Next I'll select my part groups and explore the nest command again. I can change the number of copies parameter to increase the number of each panel I want to lay out on this sheet. I can experiment with this number using the preview button until I fill the sheet to capacity. As you can see, the nesting program opportunistically organizes the panel parts to make the best use of the available space. However, consider the scenario in which we wanted to have a very specific sub-organization to the sheet. Drawing from our example here, perhaps we are selling the birdhouses as nested kits and need to keep the panels grouped together. For scenarios like that, and others, we might consider using the plate production command. This way we can use the already nested organization of our individual birdhouse kits and create copies, or plates, and lay those out filling the sheet. The plate production command is often used to create objects with custom wording. In our case, we simply need to create a data element for each kit. A nice feature of this command is that it will auto-calculate the number of plates we can create. In this case, 3 across and 8 down, which when multiplied represent 24 birdhouse kits that can be made from a 4x8 sheet. With my production nesting established, I can ungroup my vectors back into their original layers and use the Layer Visibility tab to ensure my toolpath list has all the correct vectors defined. And finally, I'll do a visual verification of the program by running the toolpath simulation. That's it for this project. We hope you've enjoyed it. In this video, we used the Benchtop Standard CNC machine available at cncrouterparts.com. Thanks for watching.